Hi, I'm Brad 2747. This is my 1995 Ford Ranger. My 1995 Ford Ranger has a 4.0 V6 overhead valve, 4R55E transmission, and an 8.8 inch, uh, 3.80 rear end, I think. Take a look around. Got some running boards. You also got some nasty rust, as you can see. I've seen worse. I've seen better. And then take a look at the back. Got my thicker collection on the back of the truck. Take a look at some of these and talk about them. So, I've been a volunteer with FIRST for a long, long time. I got this back when I first started volunteering in 2012. Th this one is specific to the community and it's in remembrance of a very active member who left a lasting impact on the organization. And of course, another volunteer sticker. You can see I'm a bit of a Chris Fix fanboy. I know some of you viewers don't care for YouTube mechanics. His videos are generally on point. The gist of them is usually good. For some people, that's how they learn best. And my first forum I was on for Rangers was the rangerstation.com. Still somewhat active. I have contributed some articles over there and show my support. I have this on the back of the truck. Besides, who wouldn't rock that on the back of their truck? Then we work our way around. Again, more rust. Yuck. More rust. But I think it's better and get over here. Let's take a look under the hood. So this is the original 4.0 overhead valve V6 this truck came with. Done a little bit of work to it, mainly did a little bit of embellishing right there. Stock, they don't have paint. And then if you look under the hood, there's some changes that have been made. As you can see, this AC compressor is relatively recent. I replaced it a couple years ago when I was reconditioning the AC system, which does work quite nicely. The most recent addition is actually this alternator right here. That's upgrade 130 amp alternator with a brand new serpentine belt and tensioner. This was part of a repair I did recently, and if I'm going to repair something, I might as well make it better. So if you need to look under the hood, you maybe see some custom wiring down here and follow it around. We actually have an HID headlight system, and I actually wired my own harness for it. That's not off the shelf. And then we actually have a custom junction box right here where all my extra circuits would go to. What those other two circuits are for, you'll find out in a minute. Otherwise, pretty much stock underneath. Just a little bit of embellishing, a little bit of cleanup, a little bit of enhancement. For the next of the modifications I performed, we actually had to go underneath the truck. Well, I'm in grass, so this might be interesting. So, not very clear down here, but that is actually a cross member off a 1990 Ford Ranger. As you can maybe see by this old bracket right over here that's no longer used, the original cross member of this truck actually had bushings. The problem is those bushings cannot be replaced and no way makes those cross members anymore. So once the bushings are gone, you're SOL. But there's a fix. Take a cross member off an older truck, lob it in, all the frame holes are already there. You have to remove the other side's bracket, which you can't see here, and then I used an air suspension polyurethane transmission mount to complete the setup. Knock on wood, but so far no problems, and I've had this for several years, and even longer on my previous Ranger. In the back of the truck, there's some electronics that have been added. First, you can probably see we got a backup camera back there. You'll see more of that in a little bit. And then, inside the camper shell, take a look. So, the big thing going on here is we have some lights. Ta-da! At night, it's literally like day in here. See the picture that I'm putting on screen right now. Anyway, if you look there, it's kind of hard to see in the distance, but we have a secondary switch so I can turn it on from either end of the camper shell. Also, if I ever camp in this thing, that's really handy since it's right by where my head goes. Speaking of where my head goes, we've got stuff in the back here. So, we have blanket, well jacket, pillow in case I ever need to camp out or need to head into work and wear a jacket. And then I also have a hard hat, again, if I need to go into work directly without visiting my desk. And then we have, of course, got a tire iron. That bag back there has um, bungee cords and ratchet straps. Jumper cable, a very old set of reflectors, and then in the very, very back, maybe it's not super clear, but there's a bag with air compressor inside there. All in all, I tried to be prepared. Why don't we take a look inside the truck? So, the interior may look stock from a distance, but there's actually been quite a few modifications made. Now, a lot of these are carried over from my previous Ranger, which 
I'll talk about when I go to move this truck in a little bit. But take a look. It started out as a fully optioned out interior. So you see we got power mirrors, power windows, power everything. You can't see it, but there's also a factory amplifier installed. These seats are out of a 2000 Ranger, and actually this seat backs out of an 03. Fortunately, this seat's broken, and I need to get another seat bottom, but apparently I'm hard on seats. But there's more than that. So if we look up here, this headliner is actually out of the old Ranger, because the one that came in this truck was absolutely destroyed. Here's a picture of what it looked like when I first bought the truck. Not too good, is it? And then these visors, which also were copied over, are actually out of a Explorer, 95 Explorer to be exact. So you see we got two elements, but also Vandy lights, which I have LED retrofitted. In hindsight, the LED retrofit didn't turn out so great. They're kind of bright at night and they kind of blind you. But during the day, they're nice, especially for my wife. But let's keep looking. See what else we got to show. Go ahead and get in. So, we have an Android head unit installed. This head unit runs Android 5.0. And of course, we have a CB. And then let's look on the roof of the truck to see the antenna. That is a Wilson 1000 with a short load. Again, moved from the previous Ranger. Love it. Wouldn't trade it for anything. Well, maybe a Wilson 5000 if I was running an amplifier, but I'm legit. I don't touch that stuff. So, go ahead and okay, and then the key. So, this instrument cluster, a few things that don't obvious. So, let's look at this oil pressure gauge. So, something you may not know. In 1987, Ford went from using analog sensors for their oil pressure gauges to switches. So, in this configuration, that oil switch would ever, only ever be all the way down or halfway. Never anything else. This is supposedly because people were complaining about low oil pressure and freaking out in reality. Their engine is idle and just fine. Now, the nice thing is that the wonderful engineers at Ford made it incredibly easy on these older trucks to short out a resistor in the cluster and swap out the sending unit for the old analog system. Anyway, so we'll go ahead and start her up and you can see that oil gauge do its thing. Look at that. Analog. Yeah, my oil pressure ain't great. This engine has not been rebuilt since I owned it. Also, you can probably hear that, but the AC is definitely on, definitely running. And while it's really nice, that's probably putting a lot of noise on the video, so we're going to turn that down just for you. So this head unit I've actually done some modifications to. The main thing being that we have the switch right there. That actually goes to a custom circuit board in the back that I designed and had made. And what that allows me to do is deal with this problem. Okay, so the problem is that if you try to run torque when you first power up, due to the fact I'm having to use a USB OBD2 adapter, which is actually hidden behind here via a splitter. No show. But the problem is that since, is for whatever reason in the Android, USB serial devices do not show up when you first boot up. It, they just won't work. You have to unplug and replug them. And that's hard on conductors. So that board, in addition to serving a secondary purpose, has a relay connected to this button, so all I have to do to reset the USB connection without unplugging anything is just push it in, release, and what that's also doing is forcing the reverse input on, which is needed to unlock the buttons. Again, another quirk with this head unit. But now, if we look, we should have wonderful live data. You see, this is a 95 Ranger, but it had OBD2. First year for it on the Ranger, so I'm taking advantage of it. But then, some other things that this head unit can do. So, of course we can play music on it, which I'm not going to do because I don't want a copyright strike. Um, that clock is off by an hour. That's a common issue with this thing. It never keeps track of time. But then the other cool thing I can do is go ahead and hit that. And this is going to work because I'm on my home's Wi-Fi. Normally I have to type it on my phone, but any moment now we should have something really cool. So, you see we have the Waze app booting up now. Took it a moment, but it's getting there. And, well, what this will let me do is actually use Waze for my navigation. And as long as I have internet connection via my phone, I get real-time updates. I can report stuff as I see it. It's freaking awesome. Waze is an awesome app, in case you didn't know that. Huh. So, anyway. And there's other things I can do with it as well, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. 
Anyway, we'll go ahead and put this thing in the drive, and we're going to go ahead and move it back to where it belongs in the driveway. Just like we did with the F-150, if you've seen that video. If you haven't, you need to. So, I bought this truck back, I'd like to say, late 2014. No, that's not right. Late 2016. Yeah. Late 2016, early 2017, because the truck I had before, which I bought in 2014, was totaled by my wife. That's okay, I still love her, and wife's more important than a truck. So, I drove all the way up to Aurora, Illinois, so five hours to the north, to pick up that truck, because this is a rare configuration with the long bed and the fully off out interior, and I just had to have it, and I missed that with my other truck. So, I bought this thing, even in its rusty glory, and... Moved all my modifications over, add a few new ones, and ta-da, here we go. And this truck was my daily driver until I bought that F-150 that you see in front. And that F-150, it wasn't meant to be a daily. This truck was supposed to still be a daily, but lately it's, the F-150's been a lot more reliable, I hate to say. Anyway, this truck has better gas mileage and overall serves its purpose a lot better, and I'm very happy to own it. And that's why I still have two Ford trucks. Besides, can you have too many trucks? Really? Really? So, go ahead and get her in her spot. Yeah, my driveway's a bit of a mess. Also cleared a bunch of junk out of the back of the truck just for the video. Anyway, so thank you for watching this video. Please give me some votes and have a nice day.